Uh, it was 1981. I was a pediatric professor at the university and had a clinical research center. And we were basically studying very rare immunodeficiency disorders in infants and children that were born with congenital immunodeficiency. And about that time, in mid-1981, I got a call from uh, Marcus Conan and Bill Wara, who were seeing patients with this new disorder that was going by different names, but acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. And because I was the only pediatric immunologist in the whole Northern California, it was not a widely uh, practiced field, uh, they asked if I could take a look at these young men who had uh, acquired immunodeficiency disease or syndrome. It was extraordinary. I mean, basically, it was as severe as what we were seeing in children with uh, no immunodeficiency, I mean, no immune system at all. And uh, we started studying uh, these, these young men. And there was a group that formed. It was, it was fascinating. We met once a week in the faculty club and talked about this emerging disorder that we were all seeing from different fields. Dr. Volberding from hematology, Marcus Conan from dermatology. I was looking at the immunology. Bill War was looking at the cancer. Uh, Greenspan was looking at the oral lesions. And so here was this group of uh, subspecialty people that were all looking at this phenomenon that was occurring in San Francisco. And about that time, Michael Gottlieb uh, from UCLA reported the first case of acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. And we realized that we were seeing the same thing here. The reports started coming out of New York and Newark and Miami. And that really started me down the path of looking at uh, the immunodeficiency in, in the adults. We, we saw two children with remarkably similar phenotypes to these young men who had acquired immunodeficiency disease. And as we investigated the two patients first, this was now going into 1982, what we saw was that one of the infants had received 23 different blood transfusions in the newborn nursing. An RH baby, very anemic, required blood transfusion. Uh, and we, the baby was sick. It, it had a lot of infection. Uh, we did a bone marrow culture and sent that for identification of a possible infectious organism. It came back Mycobacterium avium. Hadn't seen that before. But we were seeing it in these young men with acquired immunodeficiency disease. And we said, well, maybe, maybe it's transmitted by blood. So we got the names of all of the blood donors that had donated blood for this baby, and we matched them. And one of the young men had died of this new disorder, AIDS. And so we said, well, you know, this is not proof because we didn't have the virus, but this is probable blood transfusion AIDS. And then the battles began. New England Journal of Medicine wouldn't accept the article. People said we were just trying to jump on the bandwagon. There was no viral cause of AIDS at that time that people knew. Uh, but it was finally published in Lancet with the first blood transfusion AIDS case that had important implications. Uh, the other child was uh, a child that was born to a, a drug-using woman who was a prostitute and um, had the same immunologic characteristics. So we studied that child and then realized the mother had similar problems. The child, it couldn't be genetic, had to be some agent. We didn't think it was drugs, had to be some infectious agent. And that started us, along with other people, down the path of trying to identify what that agent was. Was it cytomegalovirus? Was it some unknown virus? Uh, the virus was discovered in, in 83, which then allowed us to develop, us meaning the community, to develop an antibody test, which then could prove that these cases were similar to adults. So without really realizing, I looked back on the original uh, sheet where we had identified on a piece of yellow paper, we wrote the names and the results. Uh, we really had seen uh, almost every means of transmission of this virus, except for breastfeeding, because that wasn't common in the U.S. But blood transmission, sexual transmission, uh, transmission through uh, use of drugs, and then transmission from mother to infant. So even early on in the epidemic, it was pretty clear that some infectious agent was being transmitted. And that changed my whole career.